Good afternoon. Um, first of all, I would like to give a special thanks to the organization to, for the invitation for me to speak at this such big conference in Oslo. It's my first time in Norway and in Oslo also. Um, and uh, well, what was uh, proposed to me is to not to teach how to sharpen a competence profile, but um, uh, I think I'm going to raise more questions about it and uh, at the end to present just a proposal uh, of a competency profile. Um, so, um, just a brief introduction. Um, I work in this NGO for development in Portugal um, and it has three main uh, areas of work, services. Uh, we provide services uh, mainly through outreach work um, to populations that are in vulnerable situations like uh, prisoners, um, sex workers, drug users, um, people that are unemployed, children uh, in, in foster institutions, for example. Um, and also during our work, uh, during the last uh, 10 years, we at the beginning felt the need to uh, create, uh, to think about uh, uh, what we were doing and if we were doing this job well. Uh, so we started uh, at the early beginning to, doing, to do some research about our interventions uh, to create more impact on our services and also to reflect about the reality and the changes in, in these populations and in society. And uh, more recently we started working at the advocacy level trying to promote change on policies at national and European level. So. Um, First of all, um, outreach work is considered a key intervention on uh, engaging with hidden and hard to reach populations. Uh, it is disseminated ar around the world. Although um, outreach work, for outreach work still there's a lack of um, common and general consensus on how to do outreach work. Um, still lacks a framework or guidelines to do this job better. Who are the outreach workers? What, how, how do outreach workers do their job? What is expected from outreach workers? Um, if this lack, uh, the absence of this framework exists, uh, this can have uh, negative impacts and uh, misinterpretations about how to do this outreach work. Mm -hmm. It is expected that outreach workers can engage and create empathic relationships with the, with the populations they work with. It is expected they can negotiate with them. It is expected that they can create boundaries, that they can have responsive um, uh, attitudes, that can respect their privacy, their rights, etc. But how to do this? Um, outreach workers, together with the populations they work with, they go, for us, they go and notice it, invisible. So who are these strangers? What kind of skills do they have? Which challenge do they face? What differs their practices from other workers that work on health and social fields? What are their working conditions? What kind of career perspectives do they have? Working on the front line, uh, they should be visible, but they work under, they work underground. Um, as two Brazilian um, researchers talk uh, about in an article, they say they work between marginality and citizenship. Um, they contact, they enter underground territories, they meet unknown people, they deal with um, diverse and complex situations, and they, um, they 
one of the main objectives is that they can empower these people, that they can uh, fight for their rights. But how to do this if they sometimes are seen also um, uh, by the society, by the communities, as um, uh, they see themselves as a healthcare worker, but sometimes also in a condition of marginality, without any warranties of performing this, uh, this job. Uh, to promote empowerment of these populations, it is important also that they, these workers, outreach workers, feel empowered themselves um, with job warranties, with conditions to work. Uh, that can also be given and supported by the organizations and by policies. They work also under systems, under heavy social labor health policies and frameworks that most of the times care little about outreach workers, about outreach work and about the people they work with. Often, they can be used as iron arms of these uh, social health uh, policies. Do outreach workers sense this? Do outreach workers know about this and can block this? How do they can block and create a barrier not to be these iron arms? Um, acknowledging this control and this pressure towards social control, they can still um, promote and empower the rights of the populations they work with. Um, but how to do this again? Which kind of skills, which kind of competencies these outreach workers should have to, uh, to have this kind of action? Um, these systems don't recognize uh, and invest properly on education and on uh, labor conditions of the outreach workers. Outreach workers are themselves out of reach of this labor and education systems in most countries. Only limited training as exists uh, in the EU, in Euro Europe, um, that focuses only on outreach work. This leads to uh, a lack of uh, current uh, and consensual job profile. Uh, training is done by or the organizations on the job and these workers work mainly uh, through their perspective of outreach work, what is outreach work, or uh, based on pr the perspective and vision of the organization. Um, this can have strong and often negative impact because outreach workers uh, uh, do not have uh, the same vision and we see lots of difference between organizations on how to do outreach work, what is outreach work, what should and shouldn't be done. Also, the labor system is far from recognizing the outreach workers. Uh, they aren't recognized most of the times, protected or supported. They work in suboptimal uh, employment conditions. They have low salaries uh, compared with other healthcare and social social workers. They uh, they work unsocial hours out of a secure based agency or office. They have limited autonomy and limit opportunities for career and for promotion. Um, these conditions are really different from the mainstream jobs. Uh, they work in unsafe environments and semi-legal contexts. For example, they work outside. They work outside these organizations, outside of a secure office uh, or uh, with a seat behind a desk. They are unknown. What uh, outreach workers, what are they made of? Uh, if I ask the outreach workers that are seated on, on this, um, uh, in front of me, uh, could you explain how to do your job? I think it's a difficult question. I think it's a complex um, 
answer. It's a complex job. Um, so what should be our focus to be recognized, to be um, um, more known, uh, more in front line also? Um, well, uh, not the only answer, of course, but if we can sharpen uh, the professional profile of the outreach workers, this can give visibility about the job. And also, currents uh, uh, on, this, on this job, currents on how to do out outreach work. So, which profile do outreach workers sh should have in terms of activities, in terms of competencies, which skills, attitudes, which knowledges, which training and which qualification, which professional recognition can we take out of this. Um, sometimes outreach workers are seen as generous workers, um, charitable, with a good heart, um, doing a doing small talks with, uh, with um, the populations and providing supplies. Um, well, uh, the personal and the values and the personal skills and attitudes are the core business of the outreach work. Is these are key, key uh, competencies, although they should be better worked out in the outreach workers. Um, we should work better the, these skills to do uh, and to perform better this job with uh, consequence, positive consequences on the, the populations, on policies, on outreach workers themselves. Um, outreach workers deal with unique situations uh, and have to make decisions and most of them they have no clear and no immediate uh, solution or response. It's easy to fall and adopt um, uh, inappropriate approaches uh, when such complex situations appear. So when someone asks us for support, outreach workers for support, it might be easier to think about charity instead of empowerment. How do outreach workers stop being, for example, uh, having uh, paternalistic responses to uh, to the populations. How do they empower them? How do they give them power? Um, it might be safer to keep s the same limits and s follow the same tracks when a new situation comes up, um, even if uh, the situation calls for innovative and flexible approaches. Also, when personal uh, safety is at stake, what outreach workers can feel um, more in control when they eliminate this threat instead of protecting the rights of all and also their own. How to be responsive instead of punitive? How to do this? Um, so, um, what contributes to the uh, uniqueness of this job, of this work, uh, also puts outreach workers in a certain high uh, uh, uncertainty and ambiguity. Um, the, the settings they work in are complex, diverse, are multifaceted, um, and can create really difficulties to outreach workers to decide what's right and what's wrong. What should or shouldn't be done? To fully understand the outreach work, um, it, we should incorporate on the profile of the outreach workers principles of action, core activities, core skills, core attitudes, core knowledges. Um, when uh, I'm going to show you a result from a project called Profile, profile of the outreach workers uh, in specific settings, in arm reduction settings. Um, but what we did on this, uh, on this uh, project, together with more ten partners from ten different countries, including Norway, uh, uh, and I can't say the name of your organization ever, ever, ever. 
so sorry about that, but the, you were involved. Um, what we did, um, um, an American theorist, um, a, a psychologist said, if you want to test who will be a good policeman, go find out what a policeman does. So that, what, that was what we did in this profile project. Um, and um, so the, uh, this is the result of the project. It's just a proposal uh, that is based on uh, literature review um, uh, that talk about working standards. We did uh, literature review or on guidelines that talk about outreach work, how to do outreach work, etc. Uh, several books about it. Um, we also included on this, uh, you can see on the methodology uh, part that, um, sorry, we also, we have an overview of the 11 countries involved on outreach work, on the co uh, training uh, of the outreach workers and also on employment. Uh, conditions. Uh, on this chapter, you find the David McClelland, the American psychologist theorist, and what we did is was uh, to make an auscultation process that involved around one, 170 participants from these uh, 10, uh, 11 countries, sorry, um, that talk about their job, their challenges, their dilemmas, their bottlenecks, their um, what, should, what do they do in the field and what they think they are the major challenges, the main attitudes, the main um, uh, skills they should have. And we put this all together into uh, into this book and into this uh, profile. So first we have the activities and some good practices examples. And um, for example, this uh, this core activity provides support services and refer service users to the local community network is one of the core activities that outreach workers do, provide or refer to HIV, HCV, HPV, etc., and provide general healthcare services. These are the activities. And then you can find the knowledges. You can download this. If you Google, you can, I think you can easily find the ebook. You can also search for it uh, on. Uh, up dash website and also on other partners involved. And we also have core skills that uh, the skills uh, skills are the competencies that uh, the outreach workers should have and are related to how to use some kind of instruments or some kind of how to do evaluation, for example. And then you have the activity, the attitude, sorry. Um, this was, uh, this is still a proposal uh, that should, that should be improved. Uh, it's just, uh, think of uh, a step to a discussion about the profile of the outreach workers uh, and most certainly, most certainly needs to be improved and needs to evolve uh, as outreach workers is also evolving. Um, so, um, the, 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 <laughs> I can sing a little bit. Uh, so, the most important thing, the last message I want to, to, give you is that um, these frontline workers are important. They need to be recognized. They need, we need to build and shed light on outreach workers' identity. We need to create 
uh, identity, professional identity, a sense of belonging to a professional class. They have to feel, outreach workers have to feel they work, they are a workforce, an important workforce, that, that they are not on the low hierarchy of the healthcare workers or social workers. They are most certainly in the high hierarchy. So they must be valued. Uh, they, f they need to feel they have a place, they need to feel they have a secure and strong professional identity. And this can be a discussion uh, through a profile, through um, training and qualification, uh, through creating officially recognized, I know in Norway outreach workers are pretty much recognized, uh, but in most of the countries this is not a reality. When I started working as an outreach worker, um, I started working 12 years ago in another field, and then I changed. I started working seven years ago in, um, in outreach work and with uh, people that use drugs. Um, and a more experienced worker, um, a colleague and friend of mine said to me, when she was on my first day, she was explaining what should I do. Uh, and now I don't work as an outreach worker, but I remember this as uh, an important message that she gave to me. Um, she said, apparently you will, will only provide supplies. You will give syringes, you will give food. Uh, but um, as the time continues, you will see this job, it's, it's much more complex than uh, just providing supplies or just uh, going and through a van to an unknown territory. Um, and she didn't say anything more to me in that time. So now I know this is a much more complex job and it, it needs to be valued. So uh, thank you for listening and I hope I can contribute it a little bit. Okay.